Hello and welcome to the fourth episode in our new Catch Up Fun series, a series of webinar from Cambridge. I'm Fabio Galvanini and I'll be moderating today's session along with my colleagues Stuart Vini and Becky East. Uh, during the webinar, you'll be able to hear and see our speaker, our speaker player Medwell, and to see her slides. You won't need a microphone. If you want to chat to each other or interact with Claire during the webinar, please use the chat. If you'd like to share your comments with all attendees, make sure that you select the all panelists and attendees option in your chat window. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions for Claire or about any of the content that we've shared, please write these in the Q&A tab, which you should be able to see in your control panel, and we will answer as many of these as we can after the presentation. The recording of today's webinar will be on our Catch Up Fun site by next week, and we'll email it to you um, in, um, together with the atten uh, attendance certificate that will also be next week. So I'm very pleased to welcome Claire as this afternoon's presenter. Um, passionate about quality English teaching, Claire is a teacher, teacher trainer and independent materials writer based in Spain. She has 26 years of experience in ELT and ESL, specializing in infant and primary learners. Her publications include Cambridge Global English Stages 4 to 6 and Fun, Skill, Fun Skills 1 and 2, both by Cambridge University Press. A fun fact about Claire, she likes to stand on her head to clear her mind before and after work activities. So she is a, a yoga, um, uh, she, she loves doing her yoga. So uh, welcome Claire and, uh, and over to you now. Thank you, Fabia. Okay, well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today for this session on stories for nurturing universal values in the young learner classroom. Um, today we'll be experiencing and exploring different stories um, for the primary age group. Um, there's going to be five stories, one at the beginning, which is for story, story readiness. Um, you'll notice that some of the stories are more difficult than others um, in terms of language. So depending on your level, the levels you teach, you'll be able to decide which ones are more appropriate for your classes um, than others, or, but although many are still adaptable, we'll talk about that as we go through. So as Fabio mentioned, um, this uh, session, there's going to be as, as much participation as, as is possible, given we're, we're not uh, together um, physically, uh, but I will ask you to write some of your answers to some of the activities and ideas in the chat box. Okay, so that'd be great. And I'll be looking at the chat box and I'll be talking about the, idea, the ideas that you, you offer. Um, and then at the end of the session, as Fabio said, there'll be question and answers about um, the session itself. Um, so without further ado, um, it's time for a story. Now, um, I don't know whether you tell a lot of stories in your classroom, um, but I think it's very important to create an atmosphere first, um, to create um, story readiness, I've called it here. Um, and the teachers have different preferences um, for starting a story, for introducing one. Um, some, some teachers might use a story box, where it's a box which you might have received a gift in, or you cover it in wrapping paper, and you take you take out the flashcards or you take out the storybook, a bag perhaps. Some very artistic teachers, I've seen them with coats on, like a storytelling coat um, or even a hat. Um, I prefer a chant and an instrument. As you can see, I've got some instruments here in the pictures. Um, the chant I've often used for the lower end of primary, so maybe you're six, seven years old, um, I have a very, very simple chant, which you might like to use. And it goes like this. Shh, shh, it's story time, it's story time. Shh, shh, it's story time today. So presumably then you'd have the children settled, um, ready to tell the story, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so we're gonna use an instrument for the next one and I've chose to use this one that you can see in the, in the photo. Um, this is called, a, it's, I, think, I believe it's an African instrument, it's called a kalimba. Um, and anyone can play it. And I'm not a musician, so um, it's quite easy to play. So we're gonna do a story building activity. Um, you're my class, you're my pupils. And I want you to let the music transport you and 
to let my questions and instructions guide you. So you'll need um, a piece of paper and pen or pencil to write down your ideas as you listen to the music and we build this story, which is called A Perfect Day. So we'll begin. Where are you? Who are you with? Describe where you are. What can you see? What are you doing? How do you feel? And why do you feel like this? Okay, so I'll just go through those questions again. Um, we've got, um, I'll just click off the screen. Um, where are you was the first question. Who are you with? Describe where you are. What can you see? What are you doing? How do you feel? And why do you feel like this? Okay, so now you've got some ideas, I hope. Uh, would you like to share some of them in the chat box, even if you haven't got all of the all of the ideas down, let's have a look at a few of your ideas. Uh, we've got a lot of hellos coming in as well. Oh, people from everywhere. I've got here Colombia, Argentina. Fabulous. Okay, so let's have some ideas. So, where are you? Let's have a look. Oh, someone here. Yes. Oh, they're they're at the beach. You can see everyone's in need of a holiday. Some in a perfect day and it's someone's in their classroom. Oh, someone has a kalimba too. I think it's 20, so she said it's an amazing instrument for class. That's wonderful. Uh, Guan is by the lake with the family. Some people are in their room. Julia's in their living room. Diana's at home. Oh, there's a lot of perfect days at home. We've been spending a lot of time at home lately, haven't we? Okay. Some, oh, someone's in the Polinas in the mountains. Someone's at home in Astapalaya. Wow. Hello. And I'm, oh, we've got hello. Someone just come in. Is it from Egypt? Hello. Um, I mean, it's evening time in Vietnam. Okay. Some, some, some lovely ideas. This, um, not necessarily a story for talking about values, but I think it's a nice way to introduce, to get this story read readiness um, um, for the children and for them to answer very simple questions, which at this level um, they should be um, able to do. We have a lovely one from Maria. She's in the woods in front of a beautiful river. Okay, so that's a little activity to start um, with story readiness in the classroom. Okay, but stories. Um, I'm sure all of you use some stories at some time in an, or another in your classroom. Um, and let's just have a look at, um, you know, why we use them. Um, so I've put a list together. It's, well, well in our lives, um, not just in the classroom, we listen to stories um, all the time uh, about daily life. Uh, we tell stories, we invent stories. Some people even make up stories. Um, you've just made up a story and invented one very quickly. We read stories. We dream stories, and some of you out there might even write your own stories. So, so really life is a story, isn't it really? It's a narrative um, about our time that we spend here, which is why stories really, since the beginning of time, have been used as a form of teaching, whether it be to teach traditions, culture, folklore, human relationships, um, and it helps children to make sense of the world they live in and to think about the play, the part they're going to play in this. Um, stories as well in the class create, create a sense of community, which I think is very important. They appeal to all children, regardless of learning style and abilities. Um, and it can create um, 
and inspire kind of purposeful talking and thinking about universal values. So I think what we need to establish is what we all, we all understand um, by universal values. So what are they? I've put up one um, a definition here. Universal means that they're, they're common values shared by us all, uh, shared by all humanity, um, regardless of where we live or who we are. Um, they're common throughout. Um, now, just very briefly, but I mean, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was signed in 1948 and obviously uh, motivated by the experience of two, two world worlds. And it was quite groundbreaking in the history of human rights. Um, now, all these values that it stipulates, talking about peace, freedom, social progress, equal rights, human dignity, are as, as valid then as they now as they were yesterday. Um, and although they are far from being fully in, implemented in most countries, as we all fare well, know well, um, it's more broadly accepted now than it was decades ago. It is kind of a, a common, um, a common kind of um, understanding about what universal values are. So um, I found a quote actually, and this was only last night when I already had the this session prepared, and. It was a question about where do universal rights begin um, in the lives of people? And these are the words from um, Eleanor Roosevelt, um, who was the wife of President Roosevelt, and she uh, did a declaration of a speech at the UN. And she said this, in small places is where they begin, close to home, so close and so small, they cannot be seen on any maps of the world. Yet they are the world of the individual person, the neighborhood he or she lives in, the school or college he or she attends, the factory, farm or office where he or she works. Such are the places where every man, woman and child seeks equal justice, equal opportunity, equal dignity without discrimination. Unless these rights have meaning there, they have little meaning anywhere. Without concerted citizen action to uphold them close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. So I thought that was quite poignant. And I also think it talks about where we as teachers come in here. Because sometimes people say, why should we be teaching values in the English classroom? Well, probably most of us teachers teach them intuitively. Um, you know, we're, we're older, we know a lot about values, we have very common standards and we teach them to our children. They're just intuitive in us. Um, but, but really, um, you know, why do we have to think about teaching them in the classroom? Well, children aren't pre-programmed, aren't they? They are born with a set of values. Um, their first contact with values are their parents, um, uh, their peers, elders in, their, elders in their society or in their family, but also teachers. They spend an awful lot of their day with teachers. Um, so we are another positive role model and in all of these children's developments. So it's very important that we, we live by the standards um, we set. Um, Globalisation and our interconnected world um, means that, um, in fact, English being the main language of communication means it gives us the opportunity through English to highlight the importance of appreciating and respecting different cultures so that we can manage our differences as global citizens with mutual respect rather than with mutual distrust. Um, and I've always thought language, being able to speak like two languages, as obviously all of you do, and probably even more language than myself, um, it allows us to appreciate other uh, cultures. We come to understand that we're the same, we have the same fears, we have the same hopes. And so I think it's essential for us and we uh, to be positive role models to form these good local and global citizens in the future. So um, before we go on to the stories, that's my spiel about the importance of values in, in the classroom. Um, I really like this, this quote. So teachers can be a living example to their students. Not that teachers should look for students to idealize them, far from it. One who is worth idealizing does not care whether others idealize them or not. Everyone needs to know that you as a teacher 
only teach you not only teach human values but you live by them um so this struck me struck a chord in me as being something being extremely important i.e lead by example okay so um moving on moving on uh let's have a look at our little world our little world is our classroom so what universal values well how we interpret universal values in the in the classroom do you try to teach to your learners now could i ask you all to write some of your um the values you teach in class in the chat box and we'll see if we're all on the same page So we've got here, or oh, they're flying in, respect, cooperation, supporting each other, empathy, social justice, honesty, freedom, cooperation again. Yep. Motivation, feeling motivated, yes, freedom again, love, respect, sharing, another nice one, helping each other. Self-respect as well, very important. Happiness, constructive criticism, not negative criticism. Excellent one there from Rebecca. Uh, Self-esteem, well-being, etc. So yes, we're absolutely all on the same page. Thank you for for um, writing all those ideas in the chat box. So I've just added these um, some of the main ones that came to my mind. Uh, which I think you've mentioned them all. I think I've added here as well, caring for the environment and, and animals. Uh, that could be another value which is quite high up on most agendas and curriculums nowadays. So I also think it's a good idea as we think about teaching values, because we're so much older than our pupils, that uh, to go back and think about one that you learned early in, in life, there's always probably one that stands out. So maybe as you go through the session, uh, you can think about one, oof, I remember when, I learned about being fair or being kind. Okay. Okay, so um, let's have a look. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at why we use narrative to um, convey universal values. Well, luckily, we have lots of narrative which does. So I've taken ch chosen a few today. Um, so narrative embodies and helps us to convey universal values. So let's have a look at the first idea. Now, the first idea for a story is called the giraffe and the monkeys. Um, now, I don't know whether you know this. This is a this is a fable, um, one of many. Um, obviously, animal personification, where animals behave or appear uh, like a human being, are very common in fables and fairy tales, and and are commonly used to teach values and um, morals. In, in many cultures, not all, but in many cultures. Um, now what I've done, I've tried to tie this idea in with um, a reading text about giraffes, because um, it could be a nice extension. We, the children always learn about animals in primary. Here they have a worksheet, which is um, a, like a fact file. They can then make the 3D giraffe. Mine's not 3D at the moment, but here's my example. And we could use this for the story we're about to tell. Um, so as I'm reading the story, I'm actually going to read it to you, but you're gonna see the text on the screen. Can you think about um, how useful this might be in your classroom and what activities you might be able to do afterwards? Okay, okay, so let's read the story. So one day, a big giraffe met a family, well, one at this end, a little one here, are very happy monkeys that lived in the trees. The tall giraffe started to eat the top of the tree, which was as tall as a house. Please don't eat all our fruit, said the monkey in the tree. We do have lots of different fruits with you if you, if you share with us. What does share mean? Asked the giraffe. Well, said the monkey, this is a pear tree but the family next to us lives in an orange tree and the family next to them lives in a plum tree. We give some of our fruit to them and they share some of their fruit with us. That way everyone is happy. Oh, I'm not sure about that, said the giraffe. What if you don't have anything to give them? Do they still give to you? Of course they do, because friends share with friends, said the monkey. 
Maybe it's good for monkeys, replied the giraffe, but not for me. I'm the tallest animal in the world and I share with myself. And he continued to eat the leaves and the fruit. That evening, there was a storm with flashes of lightning and claps of thunder. The giraffe hid under a tree, but lightning suddenly struck it. A branch fell on the giraffe and he fell, hurting his neck. He couldn't stand up. A few monkeys saw what happened. You're in big trouble, Mr. Giraffe. How are you going to eat the fruit and leaves off the tops of the trees? I don't know, said the giraffe. Can you give me your food? I'm sorry, said the monkeys. We only share our food with those who share with us. I'm sure you'll think of something when you're hungry. And the monkeys ran back into their tree. Soon the giraffe was hungry, but what could he eat? There were only the berries on the ground, which were too small for his mouth. Suddenly, he had an idea. He picked up all the berries he could find and he took them to the trees where the monkeys lived. Hey monkeys, can we be friends? I have something nice to share with you. Some monkeys came down. Oh, thank you, Mr. Giraffe. These berries taste good. We're very happy. Gee, said the monkey. I've never made anyone happy before, except myself. Well, said the monkey, now you know how it feels to make others happy. And with that, the monkeys ran up their fruit trees and began throwing lots of food on the ground for Mr. Giraffe, who from that day onwards always shared with his friends. Okay, so a little story about sharing, friendship, kindness. Um, if you were to think about how to extend this with children, what kind of activities might you use? Uh, you've got a couple of little clues here. Could you write some ideas in the chat box? How might you do an activity after this story? Let's see if we can come up with some ideas together. Let's have a look. What could we do afterwards? Role play, being that was going to be my first. This is a really nice story to, to actually act out. Um, you obviously have a family of monkeys, you have a giraffe. Um, you could, this is quite a long text, you could cut this quite simply by taking out some of the more descriptive language if you feel it's too above level for your class. We've got puppets, you can make finger puppets. Here we've got the giraffe as well. Masks, that's also possible. Make a comic, lovely, from Maura as well. Um, okay, so some lots of different things that can um, we could extend. I would bring. Oh, we, we've got here. Yeah, Pamela said I will bring fruit, so we make a fruit salad to share at the end. Okay, take part, making a game, lovely, lovely ideas. They can do their own paper puppets or oh, their own puppet show, as you quite rightly say. Um, another thing would be to maybe to pick up on the value. Now I don't know whether you do things like values weeks. But sometimes it's nice if you have a kind of assembly assembly or a routine that starts your English class, you could have a week which is this week's sharing week. Um, so you could actually um, perhaps write about things that you shared with your classmates during the week and you could write them on a, a word wall. So it could be sharing week and children could write on the poster. I shared my colored pencils with my partner. Um, I helped my Okay, so they could create some kind of sharing wall where they could write their ideas. Okay, so let's move on to the second idea for a story, something slightly different and simpler. So this would be for lower level. And this is based on a story, um, a very short story, and I've kind of extended it, called Bobby's Rainbow. Um, now, as a pre-activity pre to this short story and extension, which I'm going to add, um, it's about colours. Um, so often we say to children, uh, what's your favourite colour? Yeah. So how about instead of that, we ask them what colour they feel today? Colours have a lot of connotations. So we think of like red as something energetic and motivating, blue is calming, yellow is happy, etc. Um, blue might be peaceful as well, green. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what colour we're going towards the end of our school day now. What colour are you 
today. But as teachers, I'm going to ask you, why do you feel that colour? As you think about it and you write in the chat box, I'm going to tell you mine. So I chose yellow. I feel yellow today. Uh, I was going to say because it's sunny. Well, it is a little bit sunny now here in Spain, but we have been having terrible weather and storms. But I said because it's sunny and I feel happy. Okay, let's have a look what some of your ideas. What colour are you feeling today? Have you had a good day? Have you had a bad day? Oh, we've got, if someone feels blue today. Uh, Karina feels red today. Maybe she's uh, energetic. Someone feels grey today. Oh dear. Green, li light blue we've got. I wonder why light blue. That's from Kautor, I think. Orange, green. Someone feels totally colourful. Um, someone feels a bit grey because they're feeling out of the mood. Um, uh, Rebecca feels rainbow before it's, because it's a colourful day. Mint. Um, some people feel, bear tree feels like a rainbow, lovely. Someone feels, Natalia feels calm in a calm day. Um, oh, someone's feeling, Julia's feeling orange because it's a warm sunny day in Argentina, lovely. Okay, so some lovely ideas. So the children as well could think about what color they uh, actually feel. Okay, so let's have a look about at this very, very short story and extension, um, but it's going to, we're going to uh, talk about kindness, okay? Colour the world with kindness, you can see on the screen. So Bobby loves painting, and one day he sees a grey rainbow. He has an idea. He puts his paints in his toy plane. He flies his plane up and up and whoosh! The plane throws colours onto the rainbow and onto Bobby too. So now he's a rainbow boy, all the colours of the rainbow. Now, if you look alongside, because we've been through a, well, a pand we are going, still going through a pandemic, but thinking about lockdown and online schooling, the children have been separated from their friends from a long time. Um, people have been isolated, living in bubbles, um, and it's reduced all of our social activity. Um, we're obviously adults, but think about children who've had their social activity reduced. Um, it means they've become more, perhaps more insular, um, and perhaps have forgot to think about others when they've come back into the classroom situation. I'm not, I'm not sure what experiences you've had uh, going back to school. Um, so I thought this might be a ni nice idea, a kind of a springboard to talking about kindness, to talking about um, acts of kindness during the week. And here I've put some um, ideas. So if it was kindness week, you could create a big class mural with a big, 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 big rainbow, much bigger than mine, where each child can fill in and color their color of the day. Um, their, some, a kind act they did. So we've got here, I think I let someone go first, I helped my classmate to do an activity. I shared my pencils with a classmate. I smiled at my friend who was feeling sad and it could go on. So children can actually stick them onto this kindness rainbow. Another idea is perhaps to, because it was a very gray rainbow during the lockdown, is to talk about things they missed. Things about they missed about going to school. Things they've missed about their friends. You might have examples like, I miss my friend's laugh. I miss playing with my friends. I missed my teacher's smile. Um, uh, and I missed playing in the playground. So you could even do a, a kindness, um, a things we missed rainbow, um, just to help the children back into the school environment. And again, thinking about values and social interaction again. Okay, so... Um, Let's move on to another story. Uh, this one is, this time I've chose uh, quite a famous um, picture book, uh, uh, storybook, sorry. Um, do any of you know this book? Um, it's recently been turned into a major film as well. It's called We're All Wonders. For me, this book is, oh, I think it's just a fabulous book. I mean, I read it to my children when they were younger. Um, and, it shares lots of values, not just one in this story. Um, so I'm going to read it to you. Um, I wanted to just go back one screen. That's so we're gonna look at this one first. Um, so as an introduction to this story, 
I'd ask the children, it's called We're All Wonders, all of us, all of us, even, even, even all of you out there as well, even me. Um, and I'd ask each child to introduce herself or himself and think about his or her favorite thing about themselves. It could be a talent or it could be a personal characteristic. Um, so my examples I've put, are they like helping others? They can sing well, they smile at everyone. And just to, just to sort of interiorize a bit and think about what they're good at. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what are you all good at? Uh, it can be a talent or it can be a, a personal characteristic. So let's have a look what, what the class says today. So what are you good at? What are your talents? Let's have a look. Oh, everyone's having to think about it. It's very difficult, isn't it, when you have to think about yourself? Oh, no, Irina is straight in with painting. Uh, we have singing, drawing, cooking. Someone who's, Melena says she's very good at listening to people, good listeners. Uh, we've got a guitar player, Kalarina. Singing, oh, lovely. Hopefully you sing in your class too. We've got sewing, oh, I'm envious, Julia. Um, can't sew at all. Crafting. Um, lots of good listeners here. Cooking, knitting, helping animals. Um, Gisem likes doing cross stitch art. Um, oh, taking care of chicks. You might have chickens in your garden. Wow, and chickens, lovely. So lots of things. So you've got to get try to get the children to think about this because of course some children in class might think they're not good at anything if they're not good at academic stuff. But I've always been of the belief that every, in my classes, um, every single child has a talent. It might not be an academic one, but everyone has something to offer and something to gain. And I always feel that we have to um, ensure that we're aware of what those talents are and make the children aware too, especially those who perhaps might be struggling academically within, within the institution of the type of education we have around the world. But everyone is good at something. Um, so that's one I do. We've got repairing machines here. Whoa, very, very good. Okay, thank you for your, all your for all your ideas in the chat box. They're great. So um, as I read the story to you, this time I'm going to give you a task and I'd like you to write down all the different values, universal values, this story helps, tries to teach children and to encourage them to think about. Okay, so the story. We're all wonders. I know I'm not an ordinary kid. Sure, I do ordinary things. I ride a bike. I eat ice cream, I play ball, I just don't look ordinary. I don't look like other kids. My mum says I'm unique. She says I'm a wonder. My dog, Daisy, agrees. But some people don't see that I'm a wonder. All they see is how different I look. Sometimes they stare at me, they point or laugh. They even say mean things behind my back, but I can hear them. It hurts my feelings and it hurts Daisy's feelings too. When that happens, I put on my helmet. I put on Daisy's helmet too, and we blast off. Up, 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 through the clouds, across the galaxy, all the way to Pluto. We say hello to old friends, from far away, the earth looks so small. I can't see any people, but I know they're there. Billions of people, people of all different colors, people who walk and talk differently, people who look different like me. The earth is big enough for all kinds of people. I know I can't change the way I look, but maybe, just maybe, people can change the way they see. If they do, they'll see that I'm a wonder and they'll see that they're all wonders too. We're all wonders. Look with kindness and you will always find wonder. The end. Isn't that lovely? Now, within that book, there are many different values, aren't there? Um, if you've been thinking about this while I've been reading the story, could you write some of your ideas again in the in the chat box? What kind of values does this help teach 
Um, do you know, that's, someone's asking me if it's the movie called Wonder. Yes, I think it is, but I'm not, I can't remember whether Julia Roberts is in it. I can't remember that. Someone says it's touching, respect for others, self, kindness, inclusion, appreciation, appreciating diversity in a society, empathy, self-love, respect, self-confidence, imagination, um, hundreds of ideas coming in here. Self-love, uh, inclusion again. Yeah, so it has many, many values, um, this story. Um, I, I highly recommend it. I think it's a lovely one to you. And also because the vocabulary as well is quite simple. Um, you could use, um, again, at the beginning, it talks about their ordinary things that they like. It's very simple. I ride a bike, I eat ice cream, I play ball. They go to a different galaxy. Uh, it's an opportunity then to talk about space. There's other themes that you can then take from this and explore uh, other than values as well. So um, as a, um, act, a project idea, it's just one project idea that I thought about for this story, um, you could do a very simple one, which is what, who makes you feel wonderful? Um, we have lots of people in our lives that are very special to us. And sometimes it's, it's, it's worthwhile to just sit down and think about why, why are those people so special to me? Um, and so this is a very, very simple activity where the children would draw around their hands and ask them to name those people on their the five digits. So here I put an example of mom, dad, sister, friend, grandma, might be other elders in their family, someone in their community who, who they admire. Um, now, if they're very young, young children, the very younger age, or maybe six years old, then maybe they'll just be writing the names of their family. It just might be a nice activity to talk about. And they may just talk about uh, because I love them or uh, because my mum plays with me. Um, but if they are able to write uh, sentence level and obviously with our help, then perhaps we could do something uh, that's written within the hand. So number one, mum give me, gives me lots of hugs. Number two, dad, he always listens to me. Number three, my sister, she plays games with me. Number four, her friend, she makes me feel better when I'm sad. And grandma, she says, I'm a wonder. So an idea, a very simple idea, doesn't really require a lot of preparation on our part, particularly if you're not particularly crafty or arty um, that you could do in the classroom following this, this story. Okay, so without further ado, um, we're going to move on to the next idea, um, idea four, which is about caring for the environment and for animals. Um, this idea, I just want to draw your attention to the source below, um, is from tellatale.com. Um, I don't know whether this is a very nice uh, website for stories, whether it be fables or other types of stories, very good for primary level in teaching English. And I've adapted a story which is called The Boy Who Would Not Stop Throwing Rubbish. Um, and I've tied it in to a, the theme of recycling. Most primary books now, and I'm sure, as you well know, as primary teachers, have some kind of recycling theme, something about protecting the planet or animals. Um, and this is a typical page which you might find in, in their textbook. So here we've got Frankie, the main character, who is a good recycler. So she always picks up anything that's thrown in the park and she puts it in the bin. Children required to choose the correct picture. And, and it stems, the, the idea stems from this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through the story, which again, I've adapted. So, so stories can be adapted quite easily. Sometimes it's a case about be, being a little bit adventurous and then you can grade it um, for your learners. Okay, so this is called Hannah, Bruno and the Sweet Wrappers. This is the beginning of the story, the text that I've got on the screen. So as you know, Frankie likes to keep the park clean. She often picks up the rubbish she finds and throws it in the bin. Now there's a girl called Hannah who lives near the park and she loves just two things in life, her dog Bruno and Sweets. Yes, sweets. They're not very good for her. And to be honest, she eats too many. But anyway, that's another story. The problem is that whenever she takes Bruno for a walk in the park, she always takes some sweets with her in her pockets. And every time she eats one, she throws the plastic sweet wrapper 
on the ground. Now Frankie and the other walkers in the park are getting a little bit angry with her. So one day, some of the walkers decided to pick up all the wrappers and to leave them at Hannah's door. This will teach her a lesson, they thought. What they didn't know is that Bruno, her dog, he sniffed the wrapper by the door and he ate one. Oh dear me, the poor doggy started to cough and choke and Hannah's mum rushed him to the vet. It's okay, he was okay. And there wasn't a problem, the vet managed to cure him. But Hannah learnt a very valuable lesson that day, that never ever throw rubbish on the ground in the park or in any public place or in nature, because it can harm nature and it can harm wildlife. So from that day on, she always threw her rubbish in the bin. That's the end of the story. Okay, so um, clearly this is about we'll see, looking after the environment and animals. Um, before we go into idea five, I'd like to talk about um, ideas for um, recycling and talking about the environment in class. Obviously, I'm sure all of you do a lot of this, um, but I'll just throw out a few others. Um, obviously, to talk about the importance of recycling, Recycling. Um, we start at the classroom level. So honestly, every kind of rubbish, if it's a little bit of paper, if it's plastic, we could have different color boxes in the classroom and make sure that the children are aware, aware of what goes where at the very young, younger levels. Also, I've also like I've always liked to work with the three R's. So to reduce, to reuse, and to recycle. And to perhaps if you have time to do posters in your classroom or recycling walls to talk about or write about or find pictures about the things we can reduce. So it could be a typical one could be always turn off the, the tap when you're cleaning your teeth. Um, things we can reuse for art projects. It might be plastic bottles, cardboard tubes. Um, we can turn those in all kinds of different art forms. And there are thousands of ideas on the internet uh, for doing that. Um, so just a nice idea for a story with a value that can, can tie in to a recycling theme or the planet uh, when you were on that theme in your primary classroom. Okay, so the, now the next story, which I'm going to explain a little bit because it's such, this is the kind of story I like to do, you know, in, in front of a physical audience because it involves a little bit of acting out. So I'm not sure how well this is going. Oops, sorry, I'll just go back out. How well this is going to go. But I will try my best. Um, now, this is called Neda and Frankie go on a sailing trip. And if you look at the screen, uh, you can see I've cut out the ocean. Um, I have a cloud. I have the sun. And if, if this were a physical conference, I'd obviously have different or in a classroom, I'd have the children holding these. I'd have helpers, which I desperately need today, actually. Um, and then we'd have boats for those of you who like or would like to explore origami. Then we have a little sailing boat. I'm going to show you how to make at the end. Here's another version, really nice, simple one of the sailing boat and a bird, very simple, but there's some very difficult birds. This is the simplest one you could find on the internet. And a hat, a very fancy looking hat. Okay, so what I'm gonna to try to do now is I think I'm going to share, hopefully I'm now gonna share the big screen with you and I'm going to act out this story. Um, again, as we go through it, if you can think about um, values, how you might use it in your classrooms because we can talk about it afterwards. Okay. Okay, so let me just try this. Okay, I'm not sure I can, let me have a look at uh her. -huh. No, okay, I need to go back in now. Uh, yeah, okay. So now you should see me on full screen. Okay, let me use sit back a little bit. And um, we're going to begin. So this is a story about Neda and Frankie, and they go on a sailing trip. So let's have a look, where are my characters? That's the first thing. So this is Frankie, and this is Neda. And Frankie loves fashion, 
and Neda loves recording videos and taking photos to share with her friends. Now, one day, Frankie said, Neda, ooh, do you like my new hat? So she's got a very big hat, slightly too big for her head, but she likes big hats. I love it, said Neda. Can I take a photo? Yes, of course you can, said Frankie. Chick -chick. Then Neda had an idea. Hey, it's a beautiful sunny day. Why don't we go out on our sailing boat to the Crane Island to see the birds that live there? Oh, said Frankie, that's a great idea. Let's go. So they both get in their boats. So here we have Frankie's in her boat and here we have Neda in her, her boat, so I need more hands, but anyway. And off they go, sailing in the ocean to Crane Island. Oh, however, suddenly the sun disappeared and there were gray clouds and there was a terrible, terrible storm and it started to rock their boats in the sea. Oh dear, oh dear, said Neda and Frankie. Now, as the waves got bigger, poor little Frankie in her boat wasn't as solid as Neda's boat and the terrible storm, the sea crashed on their boats. And first, this bit broke off Frankie's boat and then this bit broke off Frankie's boat and then this bit broke off Frankie's boat too. Oh dear. And the boat went down, 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 down into the sea. Oh, quick, quick, jump onto my boat, jump onto my boat. So, so quickly, Frankie jumped onto Neda's boat and she was saved. Now nearby, a crane was flying in the sky and saw that the, the boat had gone down into the sea, it had sunk. So the crane went down. Frankie said, my life jacket, my life jacket, please. And the crane went down and brought up the life jacket and opened it up for Frankie to put on. Now, luckily, the storm passed and the sun came out and Neda and Frankie sailed on in Neda's boat to the island. Phew, phew, said, said Neda and Frankie. At last, we've here, we've arrived at the island. We must thank the crane again. They waved and showed thanks to the crane who was laying its eggs in the sand. Suddenly, Neda and Frankie saw that two boys were walking towards the eggs. Come on, let's take them. No, 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 shouted Neda and Frankie. You mustn't take the eggs. You mustn't go away. We need to look after their habitat. The boys turned and ran off into the distance. Phew, said Frankie and Neda, what a day. One good turn deserves another, the end. Okay, so I see it get out of this, so let's have a look. Uh, so I'm now gonna hopefully go back to my, yep, yeah, to my PowerPoint slides. Okay, so people, I think some people are asking in the chat, um, let me just have a look about the, about the, um, let's have a look at this. So yes, it's like a t-shirt, I've called it, I've called it uh, a life jacket, um, but this is how you make it out of the boat. Um, so, so for those of you who don't, let's just see how we're doing for time. Okay, we're fine. Um, it's actually made out of the boat. So uh, during the story, I ripped off this end, I ripped off this end and I ripped off the top. Um, and that way you have the, the boat. Okay, um, so what we could do now, just before we draw to the end of the, of the session is to make if, if you have do you have a piece of it would need to be a piece of a4 paper let me see if we're just going to go into the big screen again look. okay so if you have a piece of paper like this okay um you can for those of you who don't know how to make the boat you just fold it in half like so like that. This I've done this with primary children lots of times, and they can do it quite easy. Just if you do a step by step, um, it's also very good for their folding skills and their their motor skills. And then you need to fold it again, just to let the tip 
so they know where to fold in. It's a guiding line. Because then what you need to do is fold in like this to the center of that guiding line, if you can see. So that's one side, you see? Then you do the other. So then you have two, yeah? Then what we'll do is we're gonna turn up one side like so. So it looks like that. Turn it round and then you can turn up the other side like so. So in fact, what you actually have is you can do a party hat as well. You've actually got a party hat then. Then what you need to do is open this up and kind of flatten it. So it looks like that with the open end this side. Can you see that? Then what you do is you turn this side up again. We're gonna make, make making like a smaller hat. So the open side turn up again, like so, and press down. It's very, very important with origami always to press the folds really well. Turn around and do it again the other side. So you have like a smaller triangle and a smaller hat. Always press down, press down. So now you should have something like that, which you can open. I've even got a smaller hat now. Now this is when the moment comes to opening your boat. So now you just have to, you can see it's gonna open. So you press it down and the side which opens just whoop, like that. And you have your sailing boat, okay? To then use in the stories. Okay, so let me just now so look again. Uh -huh. I just go back into the slide. Okay, so we should be back on now. Okay, so that's that's an idea of some of the origami. Now, now we haven't got I haven't got time to do all the other pieces of origami, and some of them are more complicated, um, which would probably be more for teacher use during the story. Um, but if you're interested in origami, I've always quite liked it. Um, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube. If you just go in and say, I want to know how to make a boat. There are lots of different kinds of boats and you can just follow the tutorial to use them, use them in your class. So um, if you were to think about, um, let's have a think, what um, kind of values that would um, help teach children in class. We could be looking at things like um, helping others, um, sharing, kindness. Are there any others you think you could use? What other things? And how might you use this story afterwards? Would you act it out with your children, do you think? Let's have a look. Okay. Have a look. Yep, we've got some messages coming in. Yeah, unity, respecting others, etc. Okay. Lovely. So what we're going to do now is um, Fabio is coming back now. And uh, if you have any questions, if you can start writing them into the question and answer box, um, then we'll look at them uh, shortly. So thank you very much. I hope there are ideas you can take away and use in your class. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. What an amazing session. And uh, I, I just wish uh, we had time for yet another story. They were so engaging. Uh, thank you so much for that. Really, really lovely. Um, um, yeah, while uh, as we give everyone time to think of questions they may want to ask and type them in the Q&A box, I'll just take the opportunity to briefly go through uh, some of the uh, resources that um, you used um, for your presentation, just to give share a bit of information with, with our audience today. So uh, many of, uh, of the resources that uh, Claire um, showed us today are actually taken from Fun Skills, which is our new six levels um, course uh, with characters designed by children all around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, every two levels, so two levels prepare what level one and two for uh, starters. Uh, so pre-A1 starters, level three and four prepare for uh, A1 movers and five and six for A2 flyers. It's a skills-based short course uh, with 12 short units um, for each level. And it's uh, enriched by fun video animations, both uh, to start each unit, but also that to support chance. Uh, and, um, and these uh, characters created by kids um, come to live through these video animations. Also uh, fun, with fun skills, uh, um, you, you can have um, um, packed in, in just a single um, 
a single product, uh, the uh, A1 starters, A1 movers, and A2 flyers mini trainers, which are short booklets, uh, uh, which include uh, two practice tests uh, with, uh, with full guidance and tips so that uh, both uh, for, for kids and parents, it's, it's easy to, to learn little tricks uh, to, to feel more confident when they do their young learners exams, but also for you teachers to, to get ideas on what to tell your kids and what, what best advice you can give them to, to make them feel more comfortable in this first uh, exam experience. Also in mini trainers, you'll find there are QR codes inside where uh, the characters, again, the ones designed by the kids, like say the square that we see here, um, come to life uh, through the QR codes. So you'll see animations with say the square in this case that will uh, uh, give you little tips. Um, uh, one more thing to uh, to share with you is the Word of Fun website. So wordoffun.cambridge.org. There you'll find a lot of resources. We'll just mention some of them. So there are, for example, the downloadable uh, fun skills characters worksheets, and they're really lovely. So to get to know these characters better uh, while practicing uh, English, and uh, you'll have also downloadable flashcards, downloadable uh, classroom posters. So really a lot for you to explore and use in your classrooms. Um, last thing I'd like to uh, remind you is that uh, we've got two more appointments. Uh, well, one is actually uh, on the 11th of May with Alan Davenport, uh, and uh, it's just a uh, one single 9, uh, um, 9 a.m. Uh, appointment. And, uh, and then we'll have uh, again on the 11th, so same day at 10 or at four o'clock in the afternoon, Jane Rita will be back with us uh, with five fun ideas to get young learners thinking about pronunciation. So having said that, let's go back to questions. And uh, Claire, I see we, we have quite a few, and uh, one that has been there for a while, this is the very beginning, was how can we have, no, that was not the one, so, um, yeah, what are the main benefits of using stories with young learner uh, in EFA classes? I think it's a good one to start summarizing maybe some of the points you made today. Yeah, I think, um, as, as I mentioned before, I think stories, stories, children are used to listening to stories. They like, it's, it's the age for stories um, and it helps to um, form young children as well, uh, inform them of um, life itself. Um, uh, also, I think it's, it, they appeal to all learners um, I know there's another question later on which says there are certain children who don't like listening, but I'll give some ideas on, on how to deal with that. But stories appeal to all learners regarding, regardless of um, their, their abilities um, in, in the classroom. I think it's something which creates a sense of community as well. It's something we can all share and it's something they can all participate in because it could be not just you telling a story. It could be something where they all have flashcards and they have to hold one up. It's not just telling a story. It could be interacting with a story. From my experience, children from very young right through primary um, usually respond very, very well to a stories if they are carefully chosen for the level. We do have to be careful about language. Um, you need to be aware of what your children can um, cope with. Having said that, I'm of the belief that a little bit of extensive listening where they don't have to understand every word, but they understand the context is very useful in their English language development. Thank you very much, Claire. Um, uh, there's a bit of a challenging question. Um, so Leticia uh, asks, uh, how can teachers engage students who don't like listening to stories? Yeah. I'm not sure whether there's such students, but they probably, yeah. they probably are. Usually they tend to be those students who can't sit, sit still. Uh, from my experience, they're those who are quite, quite hyperactive. They always need to be doing something. So um, what I usually do is those students, you usually know who they are, is you give them a task. They could be the, the teacher helper. So they've got to hold something or they have some kind of a role in the class. It often means they can be near you and say, I want you to hold this up at this moment. I want you to do this action. Um, I'd give them a task if they can't just sit and listen. All right, thank you, Claire. Um, I think we still have time for just one question, I'd say. And um, well, this, this, this one I maybe can answer quickly. Um, an anonymous attendee asks, if I use those books, trainers, where can I get exams from my students? You'll have to get in touch with your local um, Cambridge Exam Centre. Um, and then uh, uh, from Tao Fik, I hope I've pronounced it correctly, how can we have free access to store resources for young learners? Do you have any 
resource to recommend? Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot. Um, I mean, one of the telltale.com, which was in the webinar, there are lots of lovely stories. They're all free resources. Another one which um, I've used quite a lot is called Story Berries. That is B E R R I E S dot com. Um, I mean, what I'll probably do is I'm going to be following up this session with a blog. Um, which will be coming out a bit later um, later on. So if you look out for that, I will include um, a further list of free resources uh, as well online. All right. Well, I think we, we run out of time now. And um, thank you again, Claire, for such an inspiring um, session. And um, uh, I hope I'll see you all uh, back uh, on the 11th of, of May. Thank you very much for attending and just once again a reminder that uh, next week you receive an email with uh, with a link to the recording of today's session so that you can uh, go back and, and watch it again and take notes of uh, the nice uh, activities Claire suggested today and also along with that link you'll also receive your certificate of attendance so thank you very much uh, again Claire and thank you very much everyone for attending today's session okay thank have you. a lovely Bye. rest of the day evening or morning wherever you join us from Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.